the top of your ear here towards your mouth. That's normally the direction that you want to do your contour in. So it hides any of that double chin kind of situation going on. It's going to lift the shape of your face to give you like a natural face. I say natural. <laughs> You've got that cut definition back again. So today I showed you how I kind of highlight and contour and I wanted to do a video which was specifically about the basics and like things that you often don't get told or taught about in most makeup tutorials nowadays because I feel like people just expect you to know it all so I wanted to kind of talk through from exactly like from A to B everything that you need to know about highlighting and contouring, um, what it is um, what it's supposed to do, how to make it the easiest, what the best stuff to use is, what is like not as easy to use and stuff like that. So I really hope that you guys find this useful. And if you do, don't forget to let me know down below. I'm going to be doing a whole basics for beginners range. So this is just one of many to come. So I really hope that you enjoy this and I will see you guys in two seconds. Okay, so to start off with highlighting and contouring, you need to have like your base basically done so you need to at least have your foundation done everything else not necessarily personally i do my color correcting if i'm gonna do that but if not then you can just skip that step um, my foundation and my brows and then after that i'll go in and highlight and contour so as you can see this is currently my bare face kind of situation we've just moisturized so i'm gonna go off camera and i'm going to quickly do my base i am also going to color correct under my eyes um but you can just ignore that i'm going to do a separate video all about color correcting and how it works and all of that um so yeah i'm just gonna do my foundation and my brows and then I'll get back to you and we'll go through the highlight and contour routine <laughs> okay so as you guys can see I've done my foundation if you guys are interested I use the Urban Decay Stay Naked foundation um, I mix two shades together because I'm like in the middle of losing my tan so I mix 60 NN with 51 WY in case you are interested as you can see my face everything is like covered that needs to be covered if you get me like the complexion is like is covered you know any uneven skin tones all of that kind of thing but my face looks flat so the idea of highlighting and contouring is to reintroduce the structure of your face you can enhance the natural structure of your face or you can use highlighting and contouring to kind of restructure a little bit within reason so for example i do that to i would say my nose i try to make it a little bit more like snatched and refined um but for the rest of my face i just kind of enhance my natural structure which is already there you need to kind of understand the way that highlighting and contouring works effectively it's an illusion so it's an illusion to the eye so you need to understand it to be able to replicate it so when you contour that is effectively creating shadows on your face you are mimicking the image of a shadow so for instance normally one of the main places that you contour is along your like just below your cheekbone over here and the reason why you do that is it makes your cheekbones appear larger and more kind of like sharp and when that happens obviously your cheekbone is going to cause a shadow further down like underneath your cheekbones on your face so that's what contouring is doing it's creating that shadow below your cheekbones to make it look like your cheekbones have come out and that part has gone in so it makes your face go more kind of like chiseled like that do you get what i mean it is creating a shadow whereas highlighting is doing the opposite they're the areas that you want to come out right so contouring is making things go in creating a shadow and highlighting is bringing things out it's bringing it to your attention so normally people kind of highlight in this sort of shape across their face so down the center of the face and also under the eyes in like this kind of shape you see that like just like this because it's going to give you like a natural facelift illusion because it's going to lift that way do you get me all right so enough of all of like the pre-explaining stuff let's kind of get into it so for contouring there are loads of different products you can use people do cream contour people do powder contour for the most effective 
you would do a cream contour and then set the cream with a powder because normally if you leave a cream or a liquid product on your face without putting some kind of powder on top it's not really going to last so the same kind of concept applies here so if you were to use a cream contour you would also need to set it with a bit of powder contour after just to kind of set it in place uh, so it is an extra step some people prefer to just go straight in and just do powder contour but that's kind of a preference um, but I'm going to show you guys how to do the full shebang you can always like just leave out the cream contour part if you just want to know how to powder contour it's effectively the same thing personally i start with my contour and then i go in with my highlight so for contouring i feel like the easiest kind of product to use are foundation sticks so i have a couple that i really like to use and would recommend um one is the makeup revolution foundation stick um, another one is the bare minerals complexion rescue foundation stick they are both really really nice in formula um, they're really creamy they're very quick to blend like i know you're thinking oh my god an extra step like i really don't need that but with foundation sticks it makes it a lot faster so i'll give you a bit of a comparison excuse the fact that this is really really like messy but uh this is a cream contour kit um which is kind of like creams in pans personally i find that they are a lot harder to work with because the formula is a lot stiffer so when you're blending it out you're kind of working for a while to kind of blend it out and then it can look a bit patchy and it's just it's harder to get it right um i feel like especially if you're new to cream contouring um foundation sticks are the best also if you're in a rush like it's the most timely option the bare minerals one is a little bit more pricey i believe it's like 29 pounds uh the makeup revolution one is a nice dupe for it the formula is like similarly creamy um so in the foundation stick from makeup revolution i'm using the shade f13 for bare minerals um i use the shade chestnut number nine this is a little bit warmer and this is a little bit more cool toned um i'm gonna use the makeup revolution one for today uh just to kind of show you that it, it may be less expensive, but the quality is still there and you can still get the same results. So we're gonna start with that. So I'm gonna take the stick and first I'm gonna contour my nose. I do have a video in depth talking about how I personally contour my nose. So I'm not gonna go into it in too much depth. Um, you'll be able to find that it's linked at the bottom of, um, in my description. Um, I go in, in a lot of depth. So if you're interested, go and check that out. Um, but for argument's sake, I'm just gonna show you roughly how I do it. So. I want to make my nose appear more like slim, so I take two lines down the side. Just a disclaimer, nose contouring is different for everyone. To be honest, in general, contouring is what you have to follow the natural structure of your face. So if you were to do it exactly how I say, you might be like, what? The results aren't the same. It's because your facial structure is different to mine. But um, that is particularly for a nose. You just switch up the way that you contour your nose. So I take two lines across the side of my nose and I use the edge to get a fine, quite thin line. Now I'm gonna do under my cheekbones. So, you wanna concentrate most product at the top by your ear. Naturally, like, nine times out of 10, a guideline you can use is the top of your ear here, towards your mouth. That's normally the direction that you wanna do your contour in. And normally what will happen is, if you draw the line too low it gets really muddy and it it kind of pulls your face down but if you draw the line slightly above where you want it to be when you blend it out it's going to go in the right place because obviously as you blend it it's going to move like the placement is going to move a little bit so i'm taking it just slightly above where my natural line is and i concentrate most product at the top so you can see normally i would kind of draw it just below like around there but i'm taking it a little bit higher gonna do the same on the other side and then I'm also going to take it across my jawline so that kind of makes your jawline appear a little bit more like tucked in so it hides any of that double chin kind of situation going on um, and then I like to take some on my forehead. A lot of the time it's when a person wants to make their forehead appear a little bit smaller. But to be honest, I'm not really doing it for that. I just kind of want to balance out the colours because if I've got darkness around all the parameters of my face on the bottom half, I want it to also be across the top. So I take it kind of across my temples. I just draw two lines like that. You can't see it because my forehead is naturally a little bit darker than the rest of my face. It's a bit weird, but let's put a pin in that. So... 
that's how I start with the contouring and then I do actually go straight in and blend it out some people like to do their contour and their concealer for highlighting and then they blend it all together I find that it gets a bit messy and you lose some of the definition so I prefer to do it in this order now my favorite brush to blend out cream contour is this one from Real Techniques it's great this is the uh, sculpting brush it's very dense and you can use the shape of the brush to kind of help you create the structure so with the brush you don't want to swipe and you don't want to do circular motions you want to stamp so that's going to make sure you don't lose the definition and structure that you've just drawn in with the product so i'm going to take kind of like the edge of the brush here and i'm going to lightly tap like multiple fast motions as i'm kind of stamping it on the face and blending it upwards you can kind of create this shape with your face to make it a little bit easier to find where you want to go. Okay, you see that? So it's really quick, literally within seconds, and it's just blended it. You want to try and blend it upwards rather than blending it downwards, because as I said, that's going to make it muddy and kind of make your face look like it's sagging rather than being lifted. You want to kind of move this downwards. Okay, so as you can see, I look hella bronzed, but you can see a lot of structure and definition has brought has been brought back to my face. So, for my nose contour, I like to use a smaller brush, so it's going to give me a little bit more precision. So, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So, I like to use my It Cosmetics number no. 7 brush. You guys, this brush is like a 10-10 situation. I'm not going to lie, it's incredible. So, I take the smaller end, which is actually made for concealer. And I feel like it's the right density and size for what I want to use it for. So, I just stamp in that same kind of technique. And I keep going until we still have definition. But it's not like you can see a physical line that's been drawn on my nose. Okay. So you can see it has made my nose already look slimmer um, which is closer to where we want to get so also another thing that I didn't mention is when you're choosing the product that you want to use to contour with it's best to pick something which is a little bit more cool toned rather than warm when you go warmer there's no problem with using a warm product but it will kind of appear a little bit more bronzy on your skin it's less likely to create facial structure so it kind of depends what you want to use it for just Try it out and see if it feels a bit too like satsumery. Do you know what I mean? Like if it feels like a little bit too much like orange, then no, okay, you need to go for something a little bit more cool toned. But at the same time, you don't want it to be so cool that it looks kind of greyish, because then it can look you make you look a little bit dead. So it's about kind of trying it out. Um, you don't necessarily need to try it on your face. When you're in, in store or something, just try out the colours on your hand and it will see how the colour reflects on your natural skin tone. So everyone has Hi. So everyone has kind of like different undertones in their skin. So for example, a product that I could put uh, anywhere on my skin would look really warm, but on someone else it could look like more neutral or a little less warm. So if you just try it kind of on your hand and see how the color reflects in your natural skin, then you'll get a better idea if you think like it's too cool or too warm and that kind of thing. Okay, so now it's time to move on to highlighting. So. For highlighting, I prefer to use concealers. You do get in contour kits, you have like pans like this, which you can use, but I prefer the consistency of a full coverage concealer to be a lot more effective. So, I have a couple that I would recommend. So, um, one is Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. We're throwing it back to an oldie but a goodie. This stuff is incredible. It's exactly what you need for like a full beat um, highlight and contour kind of routine. If you want it to be highlight and contour but a little more natural i would stay away from this um this one is quite full coverage but if that's what you're going for it is incredible um and i don't find it goes too dry or anything on the skin so that's a really really nice one if you want something which is similar but a little less a little less thick but you can also build it to be full coverage i would pick the Too faced born this way concealer this is the concealer that i use every single day i love it so much it is incredible and this is what i use to highlight 
um, I feel like it doesn't go cakey on the skin because it's not too thick, but it also gives you full coverage and gives you that flawless look. Um, so that one I would strongly recommend. Um, and then if you want something that is kind of like a, a high street dupe of either of those, to be honest, um, there is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealers. Um, these were like a massive hit and blew up because everyone was comparing them to these. Um, so that is a really, really good one if you want to start, kind of start off a little bit more affordable before you invest in the bigger stuff. So today I'm going to use the uh, Too Faced Born This Way concealer and I'm using it in the shade Natural Beige. Just for reference, um, in Tarte I am the shade Medium and uh, for Makeup Revolution I use the shade C8, which is a little bit lighter, but you can make it work. So the thing with using a concealer to highlight is how light you want to go in shade is kind of down to you. It depends how extreme or subtle you want the highlight and contour to appear. So I'm using the shade Natural Beige, which is highlighting, but not such a bright under eye. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how it sits. You can always add a little something to brighten it. If you want to use the coverage of this, but you want it to be more brightening, you can use another concealer kind of with it to brighten the area. So when I want to do that, I normally use the Cover FX concealer in the shade G Medium 1 because it's yellow toned, which is really nice on Asian caramel olive kind of skin tones. Um, and it's also a lot brighter, so you can kind of see, um, I don't know if you can see there, the color is like a lot lighter, but it's that more yellow tone, so it's gonna lift your face a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you the areas that we're gonna apply the concealer. So like I said before, they're the areas that we want to stand out in the face. So, the main area is under the eyes, so you want to take it all the way to kind of just past your eye, bring it down, and along the side of your nose, this is key, so you want to draw it all the way down like that, and then you can kind of fill in the rest. You don't necessarily have to go straight in with this sort of shape, you can build up to it. But I'm going to do it in the shape to kind of show you how we want the face to look. So by doing it on the side of your nose, you're kind of helping to assist your nose contour and making it look like your nose is actually a lot smaller than it is. And similarly, by uh, kind of creating this triangle shape which lifts up, it's going to lift the shape of your face to give you like a natural face, I say natural, <laughs> a natural facelift. Then also I take it in the center of my forehead, a little bit on my chin, and then I take it down the center of my nose as well. But I actually like to use a different concealer for the center of my nose. I really like to use the Morphe concealer. You don't have to do this to simplify it, you can just stick to one concealer. Um, I just really like this because it dries a lot faster, which I find really helps with a nose contour because normally when you highlight and then you blend it out, it will kind of blur outwards and you lose the definition of it. So I feel like by doing this, with this concealer, it dries a lot faster, so you don't really have that problem. But again, like I said, you can watch my nose contour video for a little bit more in depth for nose contouring. So I'm gonna start with my nose and I'm just gonna use my finger to blend this out. So I'm gonna lightly tap on top of the product. I'm not swiping, I'm not moving it around, I'm just tapping exactly where the product is. Slowly diffuse it out. And you wanna kinda of be patient with this because this will make or break the contour, no pressure. <laughs> now I'm going to take a beauty blender. This is damp. Um, and you want it to be damp so that the makeup doesn't look too cakey on the face. Um, I just feel like it really helps. So you want to run it under like running water and kind of pulse the sponge under a few times so the water goes all the way in and all the way out a good few times. And then you want to squeeze it so there is absolutely no water left. I cannot stress this enough. If this has water in it still, it's going to literally ruin it. So make sure that it's damp, not wet, but damp. And then you want to just kind of tap in the areas where you have applied the concealer just to blend it out. And you wanna make sure that you kind of blend the transition between the concealer and the contour. If you need to add more, you can go ahead and do that. Just make sure it's not obvious that you've got the light and then the dark straight. You want it to kind of look like it's 
a bit of an ombre effect. And then for the under eyes, I like to kind of pull a weird face. Oh, okay, well, I don't like to do it. I mean, if it was up to me, I wouldn't do it, but <laughs> um, I feel like it's more effective. So I'm gonna kind of show you what I do. Um, so I'm gonna take a little compact mirror and I'm gonna hold it kind of higher up like this. And I tilt my chin down slightly so that there are no creases under my eyes. So you can see right now, I can see everything that I'm doing, but there's no creasing whatsoever. Because when you blend it out in creasing, it's going to lead to the concealer filling in those lines throughout the day, which we all know is the biggest struggle of concealer. So this is going to help to reduce that from happening. So look up and you just want to tap the sponge. Again, make sure that you're just tapping multiple times in the same place you don't want to swipe it around too much or you're going to lose the definition that you've just created so blend it upwards like that and take it down i'm not going too close to the nose because i'm going to use the brush to blend that so that i don't make it too messy now because the area under the eyes is what creases the fastest um, I find that it's really important to set that with a translucent powder as soon as you can. So I tend to kind of stop my blending and go and just set that before carrying on blending out my concealer. So I only set the area directly under my eyes, which naturally creases, um, and I'm not going to set any other area just yet. So I'm going to take my Too Faced translucent powder, which I've already kind of put in a lid, and... Whilst trying not to kind of look down too much, I'm going to take my same sponge and push it into the powder so it looks like this and then push it straight just in that one area under my eye and repeat on the other side. This is um, essentially kind of like a baking technique that I do just under the eyes to set the highlight but for a more in-depth kind of look at how I do that you can refer to my how to bake tutorial, which I will again link down below. And that's just going to make sure that that concealer literally will not budge or sink into lines throughout the day, which is the most annoying thing when that happens. So it will help to kind of alleviate all of that. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little brush. I'm going to take this one from Bare Minerals. And I'm just going to like basically finish blending all of the concealer. So I'm taking this up on the inside of my eyes just there so that the nose contour kind of continues all the way up to my eyebrows. Then I'm also just going to use it to blend any areas that still need some attention. And I'm going to take it up the side of my nose to diffuse that a little bit more. Then I like to take my sponge with the area that I didn't apply powder on and I just go over my whole nose area because a lot of the time the contour can look a little too harsh. So this helps to still have the definition but make sure it's not too intense looking. So it's just going to soften it all completely so it doesn't look like you just forgot how to blend. <laughs> okay, so you can see the definition is still there but it's a lot softer, a lot more natural looking. Now I'm going to take the bottom end of my beauty blender and blend the transition between the highlighting and contouring because the last thing you want is to have a very obvious transition. So as you can see, I'm not touching the area that I've set with powder because you never want to go in and kind of change the creams when you've already powdered an area. You want to do all your creams first, then all your powders. It's just the area directly under the eyes is a little bit more time sensitive, so you want to do that a bit faster. Okay, now looking at my face, I feel like I need a little bit more highlight on my forehead, so I'm going to go in and take a little more of that concealer. I'm just going to dot a little bit there and blend it out. Now I'm also going to take my foundation brush, which is this love brush from IT Cosmetics, and I'm just going to make sure that this 
jawline um, contour is nicely diffused. Because I hate when you can see that line on the jawline. Oh my gosh, it annoys me so much. Okay, now we're going to set the rest of the face with powder. So, I'm going to take my translucent powder, put the bottom end of the sponge in, and I'm going to push this over the highlighted areas on my forehead. So in general, with the translucent powder, you wanna set the areas that you put the concealer, not the contour, just the concealer. So now I like to take my setting brush from Real Techniques and I just brush off any excess powder, which is kind of sitting on top of the skin that doesn't need to be there. And you wanna go with quite a light hand, you don't wanna to apply too much pressure. Now, just to refine the nose contour a little bit, I like to take my sponge and the translucent powder and go along the sides of my nose. Just below where we've applied the contour shade. So where we want the dark shade to stop, that's where I apply the powder. So you wanna make this as straight and neat as possible. And now I'm not gonna leave it, I'm just gonna brush it off straight away. Again, with a light hand. This is subtle, but it makes a really big difference with how your nose contour appears throughout the day. Okay, so now we've done the creams of the contour, the highlight. We've also done the powders on top of the highlight. Now we wanna just set the creams with the contour. So, I am going to take my Fenty Beauty bronzer. You can see I have hit back pan because I have so much love for this. This is in the shade Island Ting. I love it so much. Um, another one that I tend to switch to sometimes is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Powder Contour Kit which looks a little bit like this and I love the shade Havana, it's quite nice and warm uh, but sometimes I kind of just like swirl my brush across all three depending on how I'm feeling uh, but to be honest you can just use any kind of bronzer for this as long as it is matte you don't want to use a shimmer because that is gonna... It, it doesn't, like, you can't use a shimmer in when you're creating a shadow. Everything needs to be matte when you're creating an illusion of stuff to appear out of the face and within the face. So, as long as it's matte, then you're good to go. So, I'm going to start with my Fenty um, bronzer. And I'm just going to take my Morphe E4 brush. Um, and I'm going to take some of the product. And I'm using this edge of the brush. I'm going to lift my face slightly kind of make the skin taut and follow along the line that we have but I'm going to use circular motions and I'm going to concentrate most of the product towards the top so I'm following the line and I'm warming it up at the top as you can see and slowly taking the product down you don't want to take it too close to the mouth or it will look a little too intense and like you've got direct lines. You want it to kind of fade as it gets to the mouth. Okay, now I don't always set my nose contour because I kind of took my sponge and took a little bit of translucent powder across all of that. Um, and I don't like to go in with powder as well because I feel like it intensifies it a little bit too much. So I'm gonna leave that how it is. Now, another thing you can do, if ever you feel like after you've done your contour and stuff, it's got a bit muddy. By muddy, I mean if it feels like it's got messy and it's sort of moved south and you've lost a bit of that definition, it's okay because you can kind of get that back. So, if you take your translucent powder or if you take kind of like a banana powder, Makeup Revolution do a really nice one, um, which is quite affordable as well. It looks like this, um, which is more like yellow tone. So you can take either, to be honest. And you can take a sponge or a brush, it's up to you. I'm gonna use my brush for now. So I'm gonna take kind of an excess of powder and you can line, You can. it's, it's kind of like reverse contouring. So you can follow just below the line where you've applied the contour, so it's gonna neaten it up. So I like to just suggest it a little bit and not go in too heavy. So you can see, I just lightly dusted this below the contour line and it's brightened that area so you've got that 
cut definition back again. If you feel like it's too harsh, just go in with circular motions and buff it in a little more. So I'm just going to go off camera, finish up the rest of my makeup. I'm gonna do my brows, some, put some blush on, um, stuff like that, and then I will come back to you guys. Okay, so um, as you can see, I finished up the rest of my face. You can see how the whole thing is looking when it's all kind of put together. Um, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial um, and I really hope that you found it useful. And if you did, please be sure to let me know down below because I would love to hear your thoughts and stuff like that. And if you like this kind of new basic beginner's range, which I'm starting, um, then yeah, let me know that you want to see more of this and then I'll definitely think about other concepts which are kind of similar, which I can do. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, stay positive, keep smiling, and I will see you all next time. Mwah. Bye guys.